Take a side with amazing home form playing at home and a team with poor away form playing away from home and what do you get? Well, in the Premier League you get the exact opposite of what you'd expect, because of course you do. Aston Villa have not lost a game at home since last February, until now, and they are unbeaten in the Premier League this season until Newcastle rocked up to Villa Park, and today we're going to be diving into what Newcastle did that the likes of Manchester City and Arsenal could not. If you are new to the channel, please make sure that you subscribe, you like the video, and you turn on those notifications, it really does mean a lot. But now, let's get into it. Okay, so the game ended Newcastle 3, Aston Villa 1. If we focus on the attacking momentum bar to start with, you can see that Newcastle really had a lot of the momentum in the first half. They started to get those counter-attacks going. They started to get a little bit of penetration going down the flanks. And this is one of the main reasons and one of the main avenues that I think Newcastle really exploited in terms of this Aston Villa defence. The utilisation of Aston Villa's wingers were to go inside and infield. This is to fill up the middle of the pitch. Then the allow their fullbacks to start going round the sides. Both Alex Moreno and Matty Cash were the real wing options for Aston Villa, allowing John McGinn to drift infield. What ended up happening is that from a defensive point of view, Newcastle really exploited the overstimulation of the two fullbacks. And although it didn't actually lead to goals, the penetrating runs, the deep possession, the ability to really break the lines with certain passing, I thought was really, really important and really key for how Newcastle was starting to break down the Aston Villa defence. The two goals actually came from Fabian Schaar in set-piece situations. Newcastle were a very good set-piece side and Aston Villa are pretty poor. Later on in the second half, Aston Villa really did start to gain some momentum, but it faded a little bit after the goal goal after they got their goal back they had a disallowed goal as well but it really just it was too much to ask of them to really come back from a 3-0 deficit obviously the third goal really was the killer for Aston Villa a very very good attack down the left hand side from Newcastle switching play over to Jacob Murphy who was able to finish it it was an own goal but it was it was a decent run decent finish now let's have a look at the players because I want to talk about some of the tactics that Unai Emery in particular brought into this game and how Eddie Howe I think looked at this situation and managed to exploit certain scenarios in particular the runs of Alex Moreno and Matty Cash. I think Eddie Howe understands that Anthony Gordon is his main weapon. Alexander Isak is very good at penetrating through the lines and Jacob Murphy is always a willing runner so the ability for these players to really combat the two Villa fullbacks, especially when you have John McGinn going infield, Tielemans, who isn't a winger, going infield, it just meant that the wing backs or the, the two fullbacks for Aston Villa were really exposed just all of the time. And the space that they left in behind once they started to dart forwards to try and create that width for Villa really did hurt the likes of Konsa and Longley, both on either side. And actually, it's the space that was left behind that Anthony Gordon drives in into that causes the third goal for Newcastle. Let's take a look at the average positions because one in really interesting thing here is that there's no penetration in Aston Villa's positioning. There's no forward momentum. There's no playing through the lines. You can see this is Diaby, this is Watkins, and there is no penetration through this Aston Villa side whatsoever. They're far too flat, they're far too horizontal, there's no vertical movement here. The spine of the team is almost split apart and there's no verticality to the way they play. If we contrast this to the way that Newcastle play, we see verticality. We see the likes of Isak moving forwards, we see Anthony Gordon, although he's drifting further inside, we see his verticality in comparison to the likes of Bruno Guimaraes, in comparison to the likes of Sean Longstaff and when we compare both sides one has a loss of verticality one has penetration one has the ability to go from back to front the other is looking quite flat looking quite stagnant and this is the main difference between the two sides Aston Villa found it really difficult to penetrate through this Newcastle back four they dropped fast enough which meant that they couldn't run in beyond this happened time after time again and there just wasn't any space for Aston Villa and they ended up coming in field. Yuri Tielemans and John Begin 
are very good at working central areas but they're not wingers so they're naturally going to drift inside and when that happens it just fills the pitch a little bit too much and although it overwhelmed Newcastle's midfielders what ended up happening is that Newcastle pushed them out towards the wings they focused on the likes of Moreno they focused the likes of Matty Cash and allowed them to cross the ball because more often than not the height and the presence of the likes of a Sven Botman the presence of a Dan Byrne their ability to really win these headers and win these duels was one of the main things that allowed Newcastle to be pretty comfortable in this game. Let me show you. Aerial duels won. Dan Byrne won the most aerial duels and he actually won five out of his six aerial duels. Fabian Shaw, who got the two goals, the two first goals for Newcastle, won two out of his five. But again, they're there. While we're focusing on duels, let's have a look at the total duels as well. Again, Newcastle players really at the top. Newcastle came to the forefront here, and that's another piece of information that I think really, really need to focus on. The Aston Villa players just didn't turn up, and I think it's the system that Unai Emery was asking them to play, but at the same time, it was the way that Newcastle set up, and how determined and how aggressive they were in certain challenges. Again, Anthony Gordon, fantastic. 10 duels one out of 17 at Bruno Gamarais 10 duels one out of 15 let's look at Aston Villa's best player in this scenario that's John McGinn winning less than half of his overall duels Aston Villa were just like almost man muscled off the pitch they were not aggressive enough they didn't have enough penetration there wasn't enough verticality in the way that they played and if we have a look at some of the statistics although Aston Villa ended up having more shots on target Newcastle had more shots, yes they had less possession, but their expected goals were so much higher, 2.54 xG in comparison to the 1.44, Aston Villa just didn't have an answer for the way that Newcastle both defended or had their vertical passing through the lines of this Aston Villa side, Newcastle even missed a number of big chances. And then we talk about the goals, because the goals were a real testament of the way I think that Eddie Howe has set up his side and the real flaws that Aston Villa have started to show. If I show you this final thing, we can see Premier League statistics here. And what this highlights is the set piece conceding goals for every Premier League side. And as you can see here, second on the list is Aston Villa with nine set piece goals conceded. They're second highest. They are not very good at defending set pieces. They're not very good at really defending their lines from corners or free kicks. And it explains why Newcastle were able to really exploit this. Newcastle, on the other hand, are in the top three for set piece goals scored. They've scored nine this season. So put those two together and it's pretty easy to understand why Aston Villa struggled so much, why Newcastle benefited so much. And then at that point, 2-0 up, Fabian Cher taking two fantastic goals. We'll go over them in just a second. They were very, very good. And then the space that was exploited from the likes of Matty Cash leaving that space, but Anthony Gordon driving in, you've got the likes of Almiron driving in, and then you've got Jacob Murphy on that other side. It's just a testament to the way that Eddie Howe sets up his side, a testament to the way that they went about it, their aggressive nature, their forthright nature, their bravery on the ball. And that's one thing that I would really have a go at Aston Villa for. I didn't think they were brave enough. They didn't pass through the lines well enough. Douglas Ruiz was fine, but there was too many sideways passing. They didn't have enough penetration going through the lines, and it really showed in this game. Before we end, I just want to show you a couple of scenarios to try and highlight what we've been talking about in this video. Here we have a still image of Anthony Gordon running in on goal. So Eddie Howe must have communicated to his Newcastle side that Aston Villa play a very, very good high line, but they also play a very, very, very high line. It's so aggressive. It's trying to close and condense the pitch. It's trying to make it difficult for your Newcastle to play out, and they have one option. What's the option? It's to play over the top. Anthony Gordon knows this. He's currently in the center of the pitch Isak is out on this left hand side driving in as well and the space that is afforded to Newcastle if they get their runs correct if they get their runs right is so rewarding and they tried this time after time again especially down Aston Villa's right hand side Newcastle's left it really doesn't really come to anything but just the intent for Anthony Gordon to be sprinting onto this ball that's just dropped in front of him is so enticing 
we can fast forward it on here is another instance and if this doesn't give a really good example of how well set up Newcastle were, I don't know what will so here we have the back four here we have Trippier here we have the two center backs and to the right hand side of them you can see Dan Byrne he's currently out of your picture but he is right here rest assured then you, in front of them you see the Newcastle midfield three Bruno Gamaraj currently has the ball showing long is paying attention to him but look at this they're all in sync they're all next to each other this is perfect positioning again verticality through the pitch they have their different lines they have their different shapes and they're ready to play again Bruno Gamaraj is going to play the ball over the top yet again trying to beat that Aston Villa high line and they do it once more now focus here if i just double back for a second i want to show you a certain player see this guy here yeah him this guy right here that's matty cash that's aston villa's right back Brittingham Marash realizes this because he has that game intelligence he's seen him and he's going to float it over to that Aston Villa right hand side the Newcastle left where Anthony Gordon is currently sprinting to Kamara reads the danger but he doesn't get there in time Conser is currently on his bike as is Longley and Moreno Anthony Gordon is currently sprinting in and again it's another 1v1 situation that he's going to have to deal with with the goalkeeper it's another setup it's another way for them to go forward he just doesn't get the connection quite right but it's again it's a precursor for what happens later on in this game let's now have a look at the goal the first thing I want to notice or I want to showcase to you is Fabian Cher on Douglas Ruiz he's currently having a grappling match something that the referee is obviously seeing however he doesn't want to take action that's absolutely fine the second thing that I want you to notice is Alexander Isak wrestling with Konsa. Kamara currently doesn't have a play and he's currently the free man in the situation Botman is making a run into the pitch he's currently completely unmarked we need to make sure that is clear but fast forwarding on from this what ends up happening is the grappling match between Douglas Lewis and Fabian Cher goes in the way of the Newcastle defender and Concert just misplaces his man? This is something that for me, if I was an Aston Villa supporter, if I was Unai Emery, I'd be really concerned with. If I was the set piece coach, I would be drilling this into them. This cannot happen from an Aston Villa perspective. This is a huge no-no. Huge no-no. Any kind of flick on to the wards the back post and Alexander Isak has a free header. Free. Completely free. You can't see that, but I'm going to write it again because I think it needs explaining. It's completely free. But in the end, it doesn't happen and it drops to Fabian Cher, who in the end wins his duel with Douglas Lewis. Again, reiterating what I'm said with the fact that Aston Villa just failed to win their duels against the Newcastle players. He gets in front, it drops in front of him, and he's able to slot it home. Let's continue and have a look at another example. Let's have a look at the second goal that Newcastle score. This, in my opinion, is the most forgivable one. I think a couple of things happened that Aston Villa just can't just essentially predict. The ball comes back out to Anthony Gordon, who fires a shot down towards the likes of long lay it gets deflected it flicks up onto the crossbar and i can accept that that's that's nothing too bad if anything they need to sprint out if all of them are going to sprint out you can't have two people uh, malaising towards the back everyone needs to get out but again like i said it's the more forgivable option and finally we have the third goal remember what i said about matthew cash well he's out on this right hand side of Aston Villa again but he's currently trying to chase back with the play he's right here here's the referee and we have the Newcastle attack isolating the space in behind left by the fullback who's trying to create the width for his side because the two wingers or the, the wingers that are currently operating as wingers they're not wingers but John McGinn and Tielemans are coming inside the, which means that the fullbacks need to create the width for this side and Newcastle are isolating the space that Matty Cash is leaving. In particular, Almiron is going to make a darting run towards the byline on this left-hand side, giving 
Anthony Gordon a good option. This is essentially a 3v3 situation. Remember, Jacob Murphy is out on this right-hand side as well. And at the moment, Moreno has absolutely no idea. He takes a look around his shoulder and then realizes, but it's a little bit too late. You'll see that in just a moment. Anthony Gordon plays this pass and it flows into Almiron, who is going to play a, a ball straight across the pitch. And again, Moreno has now just seen him. He's just seen him and now he's on his bike. He's sprinting, but he's far too late. The ball is going to come far too fast and Murphy is going to get his goal. It comes back off Moreno, which is a bit unfortunate, but really it's an open goal and should be a tap-in. It just gets ahead of him and slots home. It's an unfortunate piece of events, but in the end, it's exactly what Aston Villa deserved because I just don't think they defended against the space well enough. I don't think they had enough penetration. I don't think they had enough ability to really hurt Newcastle in the way that we know they can. And in the end, it was a disappointing performance. But I've got to say that Newcastle executed their game plan perfectly for a team that isn't too good away from home or has been lacking in their away form recently. This was a true resurgence. I was extremely impressed with their determination. They never gave up. They were hearty, aggressive everything you expect from a Newcastle team but the game plan worked flawlessly and the way they executed and really infiltrated the space that was left by Aston Villa was nothing short of sublime and they thoroughly deserve their 3-1 victory and that's it for today guys thank you ever so much for watching make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on this game and what you took away from it I would love to hear from you so please do get in touch thank you ever so much for watching I hope you enjoyed I hope you learned something new and I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, my friends, take care.